There we go. Pat with a nice black drum here. Hey there, Salt Strong family. This is Pat Ogletree. And in this video, I want to talk about one of the most overlooked things when it comes to picking springtime fishing spots. Now, to fully understand why this is an overlooked thing and why it makes a difference, let's talk about what happens in the wintertime. Now, in the wintertime, the fish will actually move up into the creeks where there's a combination of deep water and the river bends and the creek bends, and there will be an area of soft, muddy bottom that they can forge whenever the water warms up. So we have a front that comes through cools the water down the fish will go down into the deep water looking for some refuge from the cold and then a couple days later after the front moves through and that water warms up they're going to swim up to the shallow and they're going to feed around in that mud uh, a couple of reasons is in the winter time the the mud is going to be warmer it's going to hold that heat in better than the than a hard bottom and also in the winter time a fish's forage is mostly crustaceans you get crabs and shrimp and stuff like that and that's where those those type of uh, bait lives is in that soft muddy bottom now let's transition into the springtime. So the water's starting to warm up, the fronts are coming through, they're, they're getting less and less powerful, and that water temperature starts rising. And what happens is the fish are starting to move out of those creek bends and they're actually staging around the points and the creek mouths. Well, this is a common practice and a common knowledge when it comes to springtime fishing, but there's one thing that is often overlooked and that is the bottom composition. So the fish aren't dependent on finding that muddy soft bottom anymore because their forage is now fin fish and it's kind of moved away from the crabs and the shrimp so they don't need that soft muddy bottom to keep them warm so they actually move over to a hard bottom now the types of bottoms that we're looking for during the spring transition is stuff like sand we're looking for oysters we're looking for rocks we're looking for shell any type of hard bottom and especially when it comes to trout because trout actually use hard bottoms like sand and grass flats in order to spawn so if you're really looking for trout you definitely definitely need to be looking for that hard bottom. So in this example that I'm going to show you on the screen here, there's a point that has a perfect transition from what a wintertime spot looks like to what a springtime spot looks like. And if you can see right here in the cove, there is a soft muddy bottom. And right on the outside of this cove, there is a deeper water that's got transition for it. So the fish are going to move from the deeper water whenever it's cold, and they're going to move up to this muddy water whenever it warms up so they can, they can forage and still stay comfortable with that mud and that water. Now, if you notice on this side of the point, there is a sandy bottom, and this is exactly what the fish are going to be transitioning to when it comes to springtime. So the water is now warmer. They don't need the mud and they don't need the, the crabs. They have all this fin fish that's being flushed out because of the hatch. And this is the area that they're going to stage on in order to pounce on their next meal. And this is exactly a textbook springtime transition spot. Hard bottom next to a deep trough. This is exactly the the spot that you want to be looking for. So during this type of year, the types of lures that I like to use is going to be something that's really versatile because these fish are going to move around a lot. They don't typically stay in the same place. As the fish move out, as the bait fish move out from these creek mouths and they collect around these points, you're definitely going to be finding your predatory fish in there, whether it be your flounder, your sea trout, your reds, and your snook. They're going to be around these points. But after that bait fish stops flowing around, then they're going to follow that bait fish you know, up any shoreline and whatever direction that bait's going to go. So you're going to need something that you can cover a lot of ground with. And then when you find that uh, concentration of fish, you want to have something that you can slow down and really thoroughly work an area. And there is nothing better, in my opinion, than a paddle tail. Matter of fact, I really like this paddle tail here. This is our 2.0 series. And this is the Slam Shady color. This is one of my favorite ones. And also this one right here, this is uh, what's called our Gold Digger color. I like the two different uh, variations between the light and the dark and I will interchange these out. Now the way I rig these is if it's shallow water I'm going to put it on an owner twist lock hook and the weight will depend on the wind and the current and the depth but typically one to two maybe two and a half feet I'm going to put it on on this owner twist lock or maybe even the new Haas Helix hook. Now if I'm fishing hard structure specifically like docks and rocks and oyster beds and I'm bouncing around the outside then I'm going to put it on an open face jig head kind of like this one here. This is the mission fishing jig head and of course the weight on this one is going to 
vary depending on the situation. If it's over three feet, I'm gonna try to use the open jig head. I like using those better in deeper water. Uh, typically, a eighth of an ounce is where I'll start at. Uh, maybe a quarter or even half and three eighths, I'll go up to that if it's deep enough and there's a lot of current flow. So the reason why I like the paddle tail so much is this is the most versatile lure that is in my tackle box. You can fish this in all different kinds of ways. Uh, you know, like I was saying, you can, you can throw it out there and reel it straight in and cover a lot of ground and just cast to those, you know, those select spots that look like is holding fish where you're seeing fish activity or anything like that. And then once you find that uh, concentration of fish, you can just bounce this right along the bottom and work it really, really slow or even keep that constant and retrieve and just making more cast into the same area. I love using the paddle tail, especially in the springtime. It's hard to beat something like this. So just showing these two colors right here, we've got the Slam Shady and then we've got the Gold Digger. That is just two of the colors that these 2.0s actually come in. Uh, we have it also in a Fred, which is called the Fooling Redfish Every Day. It's like a translucent pink color. And we have a Flamingo Joe, which is a hot pink, like a bright pink color. And then we're coming out with uh, more colors soon. But if you ever want to try any of these lures, I strongly recommend going to fishstrong.com and checking them out. So not only do we have these lures, we've got the jerk baits, we've got the, the big paddle tails called the bomb. And then we also have all the rigging hooks that you need to rig these up to be successful. This one, you know, the owner twist lock, we've got a new hook that's called a Haas Helix hook that works really good. And then all these jig heads too. So not only do we have these mission fishing jig heads, we also have the trout eye jig heads and the Texas eye jig heads among others. So I strongly recommend you to go check those out. And of course, insiders, you get an extra 20% off. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it that'll help you put more fish in the boat next time. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we are the best best online fishing club in America, where we guarantee you'll catch more fish in less time, save money on all the tackle that you need, and make friends fast or it's free. For more information, go to saltstrong.com. And until then, we hope to see you in the community soon. Bye.